February 27th, I, was, I spent about a year taking care of my dad who was sick and he passed away. And the next day, I said, well, where's the biggest you know, kind of turmoil? Mm. And I said, Southern Europe. So I left the next morning and, or the day after that and came, started off you know, in the bigger countries, started looking for companies. And I said, well, let me go to Greece. So I came here and I started looking and I said, you better get a little understanding of the government and the government's financials. So I met with a number of people and I said, can I get the government's financial statements? And the response was, they don't really have financial statements. They have just like little data packets. I said, well, give me the data packets. And that was in like March 1st or something, mm -hmm. 2012, I think. That's led down the road of, wow, there's this huge difference between the accounting and the economic reality. And that's the evolution. We started looking at companies and we said, whoa, there's this big difference. And we look for accounting anomalies for investments because that's like the safest thing to do. It's not like speculation, it's where there's a gap. And then we started buying bonds. Um, and pretty much when there was a double election, I think in June of that time. And we just were confident with the numbers. People were worried. So we started buying bonds from like at 1140. And it just been buying them pretty much ever since. And from then to now, I think bonds have been gone up, right? Am I right? I mean, yeah, I think the well. bonds are like 55. Yes. And we were, I think, one of the largest, if not the largest owner. The pension fund owns about six billion. You know, we're pretty large, and it's been a very, very successful investment for us. I want you to tell us a little bit about this accounting uh, method that you're using. Simplest way to think about it is, there's international standards for accounting for public sector, sovereigns, governments, and the EU doesn't use those international standards. They use a, a legal framework for measuring your debt and measuring your financial performance, but it's not accounting. It's economically irrational, because it's legal, and it's anachronistic, because it's really based on like a 1992 treaty, the Maastricht Treaty. It was meant for legal compliance purposes. What well, was Greece really started changing as much in 2009, and many of the restructurings in 2010 and then forward, the difference between the economic reality of the number and the actual kind of stated number which is stated out of Eurostat, which is kind of an entity out of Belgium. That is not, that's not an accounting number. And what we did was we developed our own financial analysis using generally accepted accounting principles. And we picked the toughest one, the most rigorous international one, which is called Ipsos. It's really, really hard, it's demanding. But we said, if we're gonna put, apply a standard to Greece, let's apply the toughest, most rigorous accounting standard so that you know, you'd really you'd hold it to a high bar, like you'd use the Singapore standard, the New Zealand standard, like I mean, these really awesome, you know, financially well-run countries, and that's where we saw this huge difference, where the debt, you know, most people talk about as being like you know, 179 or 180 percent of GDP, it's really well below 100, which is just like amazing, and that you know sets off a very different investment dialogue, like you know, wow, the number that they're showing for debt right now is what we refer to as like a future value. That's not an accounting concept. Like there's no thing, there's, there's not an accounting concept like the future value of debt. That doesn't reflect reality. We've spent you know, huge amounts of money in 20 months and a team of like 70 people to develop, you know, IPSIS, which is called International Best Standard for Account Public Sector Accounting Standard. The agencies can't do that. That's not, not what they do. They take a number, from a database and they use it. So they take, for example, the 180 and they put it in their reports. And they go, well, if the number is 180, then you must have a huge amount of debt. That's, so they're, they're just responding to a number. And the fact that Greece doesn't have its own financial statements, like if you were to buy a company or any large, like, like a Singapore or New Zealand, they have like realistically financial statements, like profit and loss in them, or the first page was just financial performance, they'll have a balance sheet, they'll have the footnotes. Greece doesn't have that. And so as far as the elected officials or the, the, the government officials, they have to make their decisions without having real financial information that portrays reality. And from a capital markets point of view, partly why your bonds are yielding 9% right now instead of five, and what is that you don't have financial statements to give someone who looks here and says, 
okay, let me not rely on what the rating agencies say, because they were wrong in 2009, when the numbers here were really very, like, not attractive at all, they still had you in an A+. Mm -hmm. And you look back at 2009 and you say, how could they have ever done that? If you're gonna make an investment, you should have real quality financial statements. And then with those numbers, then, then so much changes. Like large investors who can't afford to develop the time, they can now look at your financial statements and say, hey, their debt really is, wow, it really is up below 100%. Their primary balance is really much better. Their debt sustainability is so different from what everybody says. Instead of using a legal number, which is just wrong, I mean, the number's just not right. Do you intend to keep the bonds for long term? We may, we will either hold them to maturity, because we're making about 25% a year, okay. which is like very attractive, and mm -hmm. to have that every year for 20 years, that's like extraordinary. Mm -hmm. Or, um, when we first came here, you know, we were looking for companies there's a lot of you know, assets that are available here. If there's an opportunity, much like we did with Allegheny International where we exchanged, our objective or goal is that you public or publish audited financial statements. Mm -hmm. We have in the past exchanged our bonds for assets. Okay. There are a number of assets mm -hmm. that the government owns that they would like to sell. It's important though, because that then exposes us to a very different set of investment circumstances. Our view is, you know, yeah, there's gonna be changes, but if you have financial statements that hold you to a higher level of discipline, and they are audited, and they're reported, then even if there is a change, at least there's numbers that people can see, and they can see the footnotes, and they can understand them, then your concern becomes a lot less. That gives you more confidence in buying equity and buying companies. So that's like, yeah, your point's right, and that's kind of the second step that we'd be looking at. Who is Paul Kazari? Our American Armenian. I grew up with my grandparents and my dad, but I learned a lot about our history and our culture and learned to become a very, you know, passionate Armenian. And I went to business school and I was going to law school at Columbia. And then after the first year, um, New York's very expensive, I got a summer job. It was a nice one at a place called Goldman Sachs. I just, I didn't know what they were, but they offered a reasonable amount of money. And so I, I took the job the and it was like, this is kind of interesting stuff.